Et on continue notre petit périple au Hellfest Festival, ce festival qui est annuel et qui rassemble la crème de la crème. Alex, aujourd'hui et en ce moment même, on se tourne vers nos invités. Neck Deep, bonjour. Bonjour. Alors, vous êtes nos premiers invités pop-punk de ce festival, métal. Est-ce que c'est... Bon, déjà, comment ça s'est passé <rire> uh, So, first question, how did it go on stage today at Hellfest Amazing. Yeah, really good. Um... We were just saying before we started filming, like it felt good to come off of a good show because festivals can be hit and miss, but we've heard so much good stuff and yeah, definitely didn't disappoint. Had a great, great show, great crowd and hopefully, you know, impressed some people and walked away with some new fans. That's the, that's the aim. Yeah. Yeah. We had a great time. <laughs> et justement, alors je disais, c'est un festival metal. Vous faites du pop punk. Uh, ça a été bien, bien accueilli. Donc, il n'y a pas de guerre entre le metal et le pop punk. <laughs> uh, Hellfest is historically a, a metal festival. You guys play more of a punk, pop punk uh, music. Uh, and how how do you go on stage in front of uh, metal heads and do your, <laughs> the shit you do? How do you how, how did you get in a state, state of mind? Turn today? it up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We we play our like I guess our faster, more energetic songs. We cut out some of the softer songs. Um, and yeah, I mean we've always been kind of adjacent to. So like metal and heavy music, like hardcore oh, roots. Yeah, yeah, definitely, and, and and kind of adjacent to a lot of that sort of stuff. So I think there's a crossover for us. Um, and yeah, we you know we just play songs that make people want to mosh, make people want to want to dance. And so that's kind of the point, I think. I think that's where it, there's a crossover. You know, there's a similar energy there. It might not be the same. Uh, it might not be quite as angry or necessarily quite as like epic, but it's definitely fast and energetic. And I think you know that's the. That's and it the helps, point. you know, like. If metal fans are watching us today and they're not primarily into pop punk or whatever, they turned up and circle pitted and wall of death and like they had a good time. That's yeah. And everyone kind of likes pop punk a little bit. It's a guilty pleasure for a lot of people. <laughs> so. Vous euh, vous êtes de grands fans de metal, de plus extrême, je veux dire quelque chose de, de, de black metal, pourquoi pas? <laughs> uh, uh, are you fan of heavy music, extreme music? Definitely. Yeah, yeah. Maybe black yeah. metal. I don't know. But black metal is a little, a little. I wouldn't say too mad. much black Paul metal, Park. but like, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of metal. You know. like the first heavy band I ever got into was like Slipknot, and from yeah. there, I guess yeah. uh, my brother was a huge metal. Head. My brother was actually into like a lot of black metal. To be fair, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I grew up listening to. He had a bunch of like Cradle of Filth, uh, Cradle mm. of Filth records, and um, that was his big like black metal band, and was into like Biohazard and, and all that. So I kind of grew up with that, but then when Slipknot Mm. and like god i guess like i guess like system of a down and stuff like that initially came around then biscuit that was like when yeah me and seth Porn, would have picked yeah. up on it yeah i was a pure metallica kid when i was younger and love yeah. metal when i was growing up you know first the only reason i really wanted to start playing drums properly was like lama god and chris adler in the <laughs> in the peak time of what that was and like soft spots for like my sugar you know <laughs> it's yeah, all yeah. Uh, yeah it's all and you guys like Pals and Sam, our, our guitarists, were both in like a melodic hardcore band before Neck Deep. I met our guitarist through playing in a hardcore. Well, he was recording with my brother, oh. and they were in a hardcore band at the time. So it's the it's all rooted there for sure. And then, uh, yeah, I mean, we were talking as well. We were saying like Sum Forty One is like that, the kind of metal kids' entry into pop punk because there's yeah, some they metal guitars really well. and like. So yeah, oh, they got me. You know, I was a metal kid, not a pop punk kid, and some 41 bridged that gap for me. So I was yeah. always a pop punk kid. <laughs> <laughs> du coup, euh, on dit souvent. Euh, alors, donc toi, tu parlais de ton frère pour la découverte de la musique. Si j'ai bien euh, saisi tout ce qui a été dit, c'est ça. C'est lui qui t'a amené à, à aimer cette musique. C'est quoi qui t'a attiré Toi aussi, hein, je sais pas si c'est ton frère, mais qu'est-ce qui vous a amené à cette musique et qu'est-ce que vous avez ressenti qui vous a fait dire Oh putain, ça là, ça, ça c'est bon, ça, ça je veux, ça me correspond. You, you just mentioned your brother that kind of introduced you to metal. Uh, what is actually the, the, the first thing that hooked you to the metal, um, metal uh, genre in yeah. general? Um, Was it like, you know, the graphic, the energy, uh, the angriness? You just the... want to fight? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you need to yeah. fight. Uh, you, being rebellious. Right? Yeah, I think it was being rebellious. I think it was being different. Like, especially in like where we're from very similar places where like very working class, very much like beer, football, fight on a friday that's it yeah <laughs> pretty much um that's and yeah <laughs> you yeah need the soundtrack to that <laughs> yeah yeah um, but also in our towns it was like i i probably imagine rexham is similar but like 
none of the kids that grew up around me were into metal no. or skating or punk and anything and it was like it's not it's the one thing that set me apart from them but it was one thing that i could have interest in on my own that like gave you made, your identity gave, yeah, for exactly sure. formative yeah 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 the same same there was there was there was an okay scene where i grew up to be fair and like some skateboarding and stuff like my brother uh, along with punk music it was skateboarding too um and there was a little scene for that, but it kind of died out. And and yeah, but it was something that just stuck with us forever. Like I got into it super young. I remember playing like Tony Hawk and like hearing that soundtrack and my brother being stoked on like Green Day and Bad Religion. And when I was like five or six, so it's just been with me for forever, really. And like, yeah, it was always the thing that like set, set you apart. And it was kind of like, you know. Vous avez ça dans le son. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it just flows into your blood. Sure. Yeah. I remember picking out when my mum got remarried, like in uh, her new partner moved in, like he had these boxes of CDs and DVDs, and I just remember picking out the Cunning Stunts Metallica DVD, just watched it over and over, and it was it. <laughs> That'll do something to you. Yeah, yeah. Was, that was it there. forever. <laughs> C'est à ce moment-là que vous avez eu envie de faire de la musique. Vous avez dit putain. Euh... Je veux ressembler à ça, est-ce que c'était une envie en étant petit Attention, je sais même qu'aujourd'hui, c'est pas le... Parce que maintenant, vous êtes des stars, mais est-ce qu'il y avait cette envie d'être un grand musicien de star, d'avoir, d'être dans des stades C'est ça qui vous est rêvé quand vous étiez enfant À ce moment-là, avez-vous eu le rêve de vraiment être sur scène et jouer sur scène Like, were you looking up à ces gars Je veux faire la même chose quand je grew up Yeah, weirdly, yeah. <laughs> to be honest, like yeah. it, it was my biggest dream as a kid. Like I, I always remember being in the back of my parents' car with like a, a CD player and like memorizing all the words. And uh, me and my brother, who who plays bass for us and and uh, records our music, like um, me and him used to put on CDs in our garage and jump around with like tennis rackets <laughs> and pretend to be in the band. And that's like, yeah, that was all it ever was. And, yeah, for, for me personally. I remember just like seeing people play instruments and then being like, you're getting to have a go on a guitar or a drum kit or something as a young kid and being like, this is the thing that you're just so enamored with it. Like, oh my God, like I can't believe the things that I love come from this. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, always it's, yeah it's it's always it has just been the dream from the start i think and uh <laughs> et le pop punk du coup ça musicalement dans l'état d'esprit ça représente quoi ça veut dire quoi pour vous and to you what does the the, the state of mind of pump or pop punk means in your everyday life or when you go on stage um i think fun Yeah, yeah, that's kind of what I was, I was thinking, like, youthfulness and, like, yeah, fun and some positivity, but also, like, um, relatability, like, being able to relate to the person on the other other side, you know, who's writing that song. I think it's, just, and, and, and mostly just, like, fun. It's, like I said, it's punk adjacent. So I think there is a punk uh, mindset in there, too, um, you know, kind of being an outsider and being into rebellious things. I think it all plays into it, but it's just expressed through through that sound and um yeah but generally i think just fun exuberance youthfulness and, and relatability i think is for me anyway c'est c'est une musique qui euh, qui offre du bonheur finalement dans un contexte aujourd'hui mondial qui est assez sombre on va pas se mentir vous avez cette possibilité d'offrir juste un putain de sourire aux gens quand même avec ce que vous faites in today's world which is kind of gray you guys are just putting some color to the to the to the world with your music right Yeah, I guess like, you know, and even with like, we have some political songs too as well, you know, again, with, with being, with, again, my, my older brother was a huge punk and was super political and so it passed on to us and there's always a duty to, to, to do that. So even with some of the political stuff, you can kind of like, our, we've got a song called Bricks and I think it's our best political song and I think there's a, there's still a hopefulness to it, you know, there's still like a, 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 a sort of camaraderie to it, like you feel like you're a part of something with it, I guess. And um, but yeah, it's a, it's a little bit more colorful than just saying everything's fucked. It's like you know everything is fucked, but we can get through it together. Like that's a strong. There's always that. At least with our music, there's always there's always some positive hook in there. I think. And yeah, I think I think fans fans kind of fell in love with us for that. I think I think it's helped people and given people a cool direction. So um, yeah, a little bit of color. And we we call it to be fair, we call it happy. Like within the band when we're writing, we call it like happy, sad, like sad topics, but like sounding bright or the other way around. Like, yeah, it's, yeah. Un contraste important qui, qui symbolise la vie. Uh, quand vous faites des festivals, vous avez toujours ce regard d'enfant quand vous allez voir les groupes que vous kiffez? Uh, when, when you go to a festival and share the stage with other bands you've been looking up to, do you feel like being a kid again? And especially here at Hellfest, Like it looks a bit like a uh, like, like, well, <laughs> like a definitely. theme park, you know. And I mean, today's the first time I've ever going to have seen Foo Fighters, so yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, definitely. And there's there's bands that I never thought I'd see, and uh, that I've been able to see, and people that you know 
I, I'm not necessarily trying to meet everyone, but like you see, you know, you, you get to say hello to people that you grew up with. I mean, Sum 41 was a recent one with us um, and we played with them the other day, but we've been touring with them and we've got another tour in Europe coming up with them. And um, that definitely is like a kind of like, wow, because they were one of the bands. And like I said, I was six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years old. It was, yeah, they were one of my favorite bands. And so to see them stoked on us and, yeah, and yeah. they actually kill it as well like they're so good <laughs> they I, are like, amazing genuinely and i saw them years ago uh when they first reunited and i saw their first performance back just by surprise wasn't expecting it and i remember walking away from that like damn they're tight and so to be able to like they are an awesome band and yeah that's definitely been the most recent like oh those guys are sick i'm so stoked that like a band that i grew up loving is cool and likes my band too same with blink like being able to tour with them was like crazy but at festivals yeah if i can catch dave grohl's eye later i'll be like <laughs> <laughs> est-ce qu'il y a je vais vous laisser après euh, tranquille est-ce qu'il y a d'autres formes d'art que la musique qui vous inspire uh, one last question are there any uh, other form of art that uh, sort of uh, push your pushes your creativity Yeah. yeah, definitely. I think we're all like pretty involved in every creative element of the band. Like all the merch passes through us and like West, our guitarist, um, does a lot of our merch, does a lot of our like video content. Whenever we're making a new album, like the artwork is a is a process in itself, is like finding the artist and, and discussing what we want. So everything visual about Neck Deep um, definitely passes through us and and honestly it's like when we're not writing records it's mostly doing that kind of stuff you know with videos artwork merch is, is a huge one um and just yeah all sorts of things it's a constant creative project and um yeah a few of us are and we're all good at our own certain things and yeah that's i think the most fun part about it. it's where i'm maybe the most useful i'm terrible at organizing this guy is like amazing <laughs> spreadsheets so this guy is amazing at like well he used to be a crew dog right yeah. it pals is our drum tech for a long time so like logistically and in terms of how like a tour works he's like bam 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 but creative. you can't fly that it's not on the car now yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. put it back yeah <laughs> but um yeah but then there's some uh, you know a few of us uh Uh, are, are quite visual and, and uh, uh, you know, are super into that side of things too. So yeah, it's a constant project. You, you know, like the, the, for the people in the band that aren't super inclined in terms everyone of visuals, like you inspire, everyone. you inspire us like to follow on that and like, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. And everyone has a say everyone, yeah. like we're pretty democratic as a band. Yeah. Like there's not one person that like runs stuff. It's like, we're all good at something mm. and we all do that and we all trust each other and like have a say and we generally do majority rules on things. So sometimes people might not, get things the way they want it but whatever you know it, something else Suck will come it, along yeah. the next day where we'll have to decide so yeah it's a constant project in every area like yeah we don't just rock up and play there's there's lots that goes into behind the scenes and active for sure so yeah, we've got we've got gr tons of great ideas for music videos and they never just get don't made have a million cost, dollars yeah <laughs> so <laughs> So it's basically you get what you get <laughs> <laughs> it's basically trying to figure out how to do crazy ideas that don't cost yeah. them. Yeah, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> we're doing all right so far. Yeah, we're doing yeah. We know. <laughs> Thank you for everything. Merci, Merci beaucoup Thank pour you. tout ce que vous faites, euh, pour euh, les dernières nouveautés, bien sûr. Et puis, euh, on espère vous voir très, très bientôt à Paris. Euh, et euh, on sera encore là, devant vous, à regarder, euh, s'amuser. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much, guys. See you in Paris. See you in Merci. Paris. Yeah. See you in Paris.